Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Wolves of Shadowed Fate Episode 18 Chapter 98 to 102 Chapter 98 Justin's POV I can't say that I enjoyed seeing my little Jules be assisted so much on the course. I thought that it was just our family who thought that she had hung the moon. Turns out this little guy thinks that she hung it too. I can see it. The care and concern he has for her. Before either of us could step in to help her, Alex was there. I remember that feeling. He really might be her mate. I do not know how he could tell at such a young age, so I will be keeping a special eye on him from now on. If they are mates, I will let it go with my blessing, after all, she is about a month older than him, so she might sense it first. But if they are not mates, he can hang it up. I want all of our children to find and love their true, goddess-given mates. There is nothing better than having your true mate by your side. I was talking with my dad, but with Lorna's excellent hearing, I heard what Brandon said to her about Alex. His teasing her about the course was funny to me. He is in his office most of the time, and he never sees her training, if he does, it is rare, and usually at a distance. Raven doesn't play, I train her, and I am with her most of the time. I will give you two reasons why she doesn't play with her training. Her mates, and her children. She will never let any of us get hurt if she has a chance at all at stopping it from happening. I will tell you that she is very serious, and she always goes the extra mile to stay at the head of any of the classes that she is in. I guess Brandon is going to be getting a surprise today too, as she and Stella are not to be messed with. I am not going to be running it full tilt with them. I am content to stay back and watch the show. Maybe help the kids with the obstacles that they cannot reach, if they are willing to try to do it, I already know that Jax will want to run it, I saw him come over here to look at it after we arrived here before he went to check out the children's course. Brandon had been right in what he had said to Raven though. I had told him a few years before, about the fact that I could sense a pull toward Raven. It started around when I was ten and she was nine. I just thought it was because I thought she was so cute, not because I was going to be her mate. I had never even thought of that as a possibility. Mostly because she was not someone that was acceptable to claim at Silver Blade. Despite her being the daughter of the Alpha, it would have been so hard to get people there to leave her alone, even as my mate. I would have had to leave the pack with her to get her safe. I already know that Graham would have Alpha commanded me to either reject her or for me physically hurt her, or both. Those options were totally unacceptable to me. I still can't believe that I got her back, and I thank the goddess again for giving us back our bond. She gave me my life back when she gave Raven back to me again. I didn't want to go on without her, and I couldn't be happier right now. We all strolled over toward the adult course, and the group grew as we walked over to it. Apparently, everyone who heard the challenge that Carter gave Raven and Stella, was drawing a lot of attention. The information was flying through the pack, and if I were to bet, I would put my money on Raven and Stella. They remembered the last time a challenge was made when Stella beat Joshua up. That was the only way to bring both of them down a peg from all the stories about it that I have heard. I loved how Joshua was so arrogant and invited everyone to come and see him teach her a lesson. I have to say that I have known both Joshua and Carter for a minute. Joshua and I are the same age, and we have trained together before. Joshua was a good fighter, but he was not as good a fighter as he thought he was. I again wish that I had jumped onto Bloodwalker Pack Land right behind Raven, and begged her to take me back. If I did, I might have seen that fight happen. But with what had happened that night, and how angry she was at me, 
I do not know what would have happened to me if I would have tried it. She hated me, and I bet Alpha Cole would have forced me to accept her rejection and then kicked me out of his pack. Maybe things had worked out for the best with what had ended up happening to us that night. By the time we arrived at the adult course, there were about 150 people there. Our children had come with us, as they wanted to support us. I can already see Jack eyeing this course. We have let him try our adult course with us at Blackadder before. He loved it and did very well on it. There were just two obstacles there that he was not tall enough for, just yet. He avoids them, and he has run it with me at least 100 times now. He loves to try new things, and he likes to test his abilities. He likes to push himself to do more, to be stronger than his fellow children in the pack. He doesn't brag about what he can do, he is very humble and just wants to be the best Jackson that he can be. Named after his grandfather, Jackson, who had been a very respected alpha for the Black Adder pack. He already had big shoes to fill, even before we knew of an attack. I am glad that the goddess is helping him become the person that he was always supposed to be. I knew what to do, Carter, do any of the younger kids try to run the adult course too? I asked Carter. Yes. Lucas and Griffin have both run it before, there are three obstacles that are too high for them to jump up to be able to reach the bars. So they have just been skipping those for now, until they get taller Carter told me and Joshua nodded in agreement, as they knew what I was going to ask next. Would it be okay if Jax tried it with us today? I asked him. Carter said, sure, they can run if they want to. I see that Liam, Chase, and Dex were all standing there right behind Jax and looking at me, to see if it was okay. I had assumed that it might be the case, but I didn't want to speak for them. So, I guess you guys would like to run it too, with us. I asked the group. Yes, we all want to try it. If there is something we can't do, we can just skip it Liam said as he stepped forward to take charge for now. They all nodded in agreement. I looked at Brandon and Raven for approval from them. They both nodded their approval. I guess they are all four going to run it, and I am excited to see them in motion doing it. I am so proud of all of our children, and I cannot express what I am feeling. I have pride in them, and respect for them trying to do something that is beyond their skill set, at least for the moment. Jax is already comfortable with being a leader. He encourages his brothers to follow him, and they have complete faith and trust in him. He leads by example, and he never leaves them behind, no matter how many children pass them on the course as he helps them get past the obstacle. He stays with them, and he tells them how to do it for themselves. I can see his goddess-given strength and I know that Raven was right when she pointed that out when he was two years old. He was the oldest, so at first, we didn't realize how very special she was. At first, we all thought that it was because he was an alpha born, but that wasn't it. Liam and Chase are great kids too, smart, and as different as night and day from each other. Because Liam got his father's kind of explosive patience, and Chase is as laid back as I am. But after Dex got to be about one year old, we all realized how different he was from his brothers. Dex is a bit more of a firecracker than my other children, but he is also kind, smart, and a good friend. His sense of humor draws in a lot of kids wanting to be friends with him, he is never alone. I spend a lot of time with Jax, as I help to train him daily. He listens so well to instructions. He is patient and willing to try again, and again, to learn something new. He realizes that with each failure, he gets closer to what it is supposed to be. I have never seen a child that was so focused before in my life. I know when I was 10 years old, I was nowhere near where Jax is. He is special, he is favored by the goddess, 
and I believe that she will keep him safe in whatever is going to happen. I pray all the time that we find out who is behind this. So we can come in and cut them off at the knees. I don't want to lose my parents here at Blood Walker, or any of the pack members at Black Adder. Things have been very good for us for the last four years at Black Adder. Everyone has finally accepted that Raven did indeed get two mates, and was blessed by the goddess now. I think for years even after the incident in the dining room with Justine and Catherine, some still had the opinion that Raven was just being greedy. That she hadn't been gifted by the goddess, to have two mates. They still believed that she just wanted to be with both of us, was the popular opinion. I don't know why they would even think that, as she caught a lot of grief from the pack over it. We even caught some flack ourselves from the older more judgmental members of the pack. If I hadn't been her mate, she would have just kept me on the side, unknown to all of them. She would not have claimed me in front of the whole pack and told them that both Brandon and I belonged to her. She would have just been the Luna, and would have just met me behind closed doors. But that was not the case. Yes, we really got off to a rocky start. I agree, Reagan really f'd us up a lot. We had a very jacked up beginning. But I think that from that experience, we became stronger for going through it together. I stood behind them with the boys, as Cole walked over to us. He looked right at Carter, Joshua and Brandon and said, good luck, boys, and then laughed at their confused looks. Cole then motioned to all of us to see if we were ready to go. We all gave him a nod and he blew the whistle. They all took over quickly, and at first, the guys were running at full speed. They seemed like they were going to beat the pants off the women. I took off with the boys and only had to help them with two of the obstacles. Jax was able to make a running leap on the third one to get a hold of the hand grips, and the other boys quickly followed his lead. He is smoking through this course, and I can tell that he is trying to catch up with his mom. That makes me smile, we very well might catch back up to her, and these boys are giving it their all to move through it. They had listened to my instructions before starting, and I called out to them what they would be needing to do with each obstacle that we approached. They listened and we moved through them right behind the other group. They were like 100 feet in front of us, which is not bad considering that only Jax had gotten to double digits. On the running between obstacles, he went all out, as he tried to catch up with the group in front of us. They wanted to see how well their mom was going to do against one of their dads. They have seen her train, they know that she pulls no punches when she is in a challenge, no matter what it is. They move across the balance beam like it was nothing and that brings them closer to their mom. They are as light-footed as mountain goats as they run at full tilt across the 30-foot beam. They are doing so well, and I hope that someone got a video of this, as I am so proud of them. I am sure that Brandon and Raven will want to see this too. The last 200 meters back to the end of the course were running. I am sure that they were trying to even the playing field and let people that may be worse at the obstacles have a slight chance to catch up. So these last 600 feet, were going to tell the tale for everyone. They were in a dead heat running to the finish line. Someone had even found some caution tape and it was being held at the end of the course, like a finish line. I already know that Stella and Raven will stop toying with them now. I knew that they had been throughout the course. I knew it because they are two of the best at going through our own course, and this one was really similar to it. I guess they wanted the guys to think that they had a chance. The thought makes me chuckle. I see Truett and Austin holding the finish line, and grinning their heads off at being there to see the girls beat them. Carter, Brandon and Joshua were all about 20 feet in front of them and halfway back to the finish line when the girls finally made their move. They passed the guys at about 100 feet from the finish and then left them in the dust. The guys tried to speed back up to pass them, 
but they had gone out full tilt from the start and didn't conserve anything for the end of the race, the course took 10 minutes to get through. It was a rookie mistake, and I was trying not to laugh at them as the boys and I followed along behind them. I watch as Raven and Stella finish the race holding hands and side by side, as they broke through the tape. I already know that Carter and Joshua are going to be complaining about losing. But Brandon seems proud of Raven as he crosses the finish line and then walks over to give Raven a kiss. When will you two learn to stop challenging people to stuff? I mean I know it was Carter this time, Joshua, but it seems like you two needed another slice of humble pie. Maybe next time you two will win but I wouldn't bet on it Stella said and then started cracking up with laughter. That started some good-natured joking for all of them as we crossed the finish line ourselves. I could see that Carter was both proud of his sister, but a little embarrassed at challenging her now. There had to be over 200 people here now, and this is going to spread like wildfire through the pack. Truett hugged Stella from behind and then gave her a kiss on her mark. Their children were all around them, and they were super proud of their mom. I was proud of our boys. They really pushed there at the end to finish and were only like 50 seconds behind their mom, who had won the race. Not too shabby for our kids. I was glad to see Olivia had her phone up and recording us when we finished. I wanted Raven and Brandon to see how great our kids did. Raven had seen them finish and was on her knees trying to hug all of them at once. They were also proud of her for winning the race. They saw her when she passed Brandon, and they were all cheering her on as we ran to the finish line ourselves behind them. They knew their dad had been trying to beat her. None of us just give up, no matter what it is. We have told the kids that from when they were babies. That no matter where they finished in their race, if they did their best, that was all we needed from them. They all knew it, with the exception of our youngest, who I suspect was milking it in her race earlier. At least I think so because maybe she liked Alex taking care of her on the course. But she is still young, plus she has my easy-going mentality. She is happy for James to do better than her, and she is a peacemaker. She just wants to be happy and for her family to be happy. I know that she probably won't be fighting when it comes down to it. But she will still have to train and do her best in the meantime. We need her to be able to properly protect herself if we are not there to do it for her. I won't give her a hard time of it, but I think we need to tell her that even if she doesn't love training, she still needs to apply her all to it. Knowing how to defend herself can save her life and that is invaluable to me. I would do anything to protect my children and my mate. It is the reason that I do what I do. I don't like leaving them to go take specific training in the city for the martial arts that they like to learn. I am just trying to make sure that we are as equipped as we can be to be able to attack in both our wolf and human forms. I want our children to be deadly, in either form, as well. I know what the warning was when the goddess gave us a heads up on what was coming. I know that the goddess was completely serious about it. There was a reason that she gave Raven back to me. One that was bigger than all of us. One that could cost us some of our precious children and I didn't want that to happen. I know that what we are facing is life-changing, and could change all of our lives for the worst. I know that even if we make it fun to learn, and they learn everything, they could still be injured, or even killed. I cannot allow that to happen, whatever I need to do to protect the children, the pack, and my mate is what I am willing to do. Because at the end of the day, I know exactly what Reagan is capable of doing. She is willing to use absolutely anyone to get what she wants. She has hurt so many people, especially Raven and me. Her uncaring attitude about others, and wanting what she wants, when she wants it, has not left her with any friends. She is a real piece of work and if I had to do it all over again when she came to my hotel and knocked on the door, I would have slammed it closed in her face. 
I swear to the goddess that I will not fail Raven again. I will protect my mate and my children from whoever is coming for them. I will never allow Regan to take me away from Raven ever again. Chapter 99 Regan's POV I swear I hate Aloise with a passion. She is attacking my babies, and Aaron is an IT for defending her. I had proof of her actions, for the last few years. There were scratches, cuts, and mysterious bruises. She always had an excuse for why they had the injuries but never once was it ever her fault. Our oldest child, Trevor, was seriously injured yesterday, he could have been killed by her, and still, Aaron did nothing. I had video proof of what she had done to Trevor, Henry and even John on several occasions, but he refused to look at them. They are his own flesh and blood, and he does love them, but he is all talk and no action against her, six years later. I honestly believe that she is willing and able to kill my children with Aaron. Her only goal is for her son Austin to become Alpha here at Blood Tracker. I can't let her take it that far. The gloves are off now. I will not stand back and allow her to get another shot at my babies. Trevor's arm was broken by her when she shoved him down the last flight of stairs in the pack house when they were coming down to dinner last night. She said that he must have tripped as he was running down the stairs. He is almost ten years old, and he is not clumsy, he is a strong little wolf, but I cannot allow our babies to stay here in the pack house with the danger against them, increasing all the time. I know that he will not act until something truly horrible happens, like her being successful in killing one of them. I have Trevor resting at my home now. I am coming here to get my other babies now. I will not leave any of them here to be hurt by her anymore. If I have to there will be bunk beds in all of my bedrooms to house my children. I will get dad to have an addition built onto my house if I need to, but that BH will never be getting her hands on any of my children again. I knocked on the door to Aaron's office but knew that it was going to be a minute. I could hear him and Aloise going at it inside. She managed to give him two pups, but since having their youngest, Anais, she had not been able to get pregnant again. It has now been five years, and she is really angry about it. Why she is angry with me is a complete mystery. I stay in my home. I don't come to the pack house unless I have to. Why she would blame me at all for her not being able to get pregnant anymore is just stupid. I could care less about her and her babies. None of them matter to me, only my pups mattered to me. I want to see the video of what happened to Trevor, and then I will straighten this whole thing out. I already know what happened because Trevor had told me, but I wanted to see it, so I can confront Aaron about it. He won't care, but it should be enough for him to realize that she won't stop until she has killed one, or more of our pups. Ten minutes later the door opens and Aloise stepped into the hallway, with a big smile on her face. She seems smug, and I believe I already know why. She came here because she knew I was coming, and wanted him to take care of, and protect her again. I had told him I was coming last night, and he probably related to her. The last time she hurt one of my pups I told her that I would take them back so she couldn't get her hands on them again. She is trying to butter Aaron up to side with her on this, and I could care less. She can have s asterisk x with him on the desk while I am speaking to him for all I care. Their relationship doesn't matter to me. I do not want him at all. I have Clive, and I do not want to have a sl relationship with Aaron anymore. The lack of care for our children that he has shown for the last six years since he found her, has completely soured my opinion of him. He wanted strong pups, and I gave them to him. It was his job to protect them now, he promised me that he would. He swore that he would protect them, and he lied to me. I am just glad that the nanny knows how Aloise is and she keeps our youngest daughter away from her. She is only five and a half now, 
she is not used to people wanting to hurt her. So sorry for the wait, you caught us in the middle of something, Aloise said to me with a smirk. No problem, Aloise. I just needed to speak to Aaron about something. I won't be long. But you are welcome to stay here with us. I know that you don't like me being around him I told her, and she seemed surprised by what I said. I think she still has it in her head that I want Aaron, and I do not. Clive and I love each other and he is the one that I want. She forgets that I was literally sold to Aaron, by Blake. That I can't leave here because people are still actively looking for me and my family. We were never in a relationship. He just likes me as I provided him with the pups that he wanted. Nothing more, nothing less than that. She has it built up in her head that I still wanted to sleep with Aaron, but he kept his word, and after finding his mate, we have not been together again. I appreciate the offer but I have some things to plan. I will see you later Eloise said. If your planning includes hurting any of my pups again, I would suggest to you that you stop, and think before you do anything else stupid. They will not be staying here anymore. They will be coming out to my home to live now, all thanks to you. It is clear that Aaron cannot keep them safe from you. So. I will be the one to have to protect them until they get to adulthood. He, and you as well, are always welcome to come out and visit with them at my home. If you are there I am afraid that I will have to insist on the visit being supervised. I just won't take a chance on my babies being hurt, because you want your son to inherit the pack. Having Aaron's children was my job, not a relationship. You are jealous over things that Aaron himself chose to do. Your anger is aimed at the wrong people. Leave my pups alone, or there will be consequences for your actions I told her in a calm tone. I was not bluffing, and I didn't threaten her. She is the Luna, and I know the rules, very well. That said, I know my way around the rules too. It was a threat but only if she came for my pups again. If she leaves them alone, there will be no further problems between us. I knew full well she had come at my appointment time to give her side of the story to Aaron. Then had S asterisk X with him so he would be in a good mood, and to sweeten the deal. She is his mate, and he wants to believe her. I don't, I believe my son, who is a good person and has never lied to me. I knew that she had left the door to his office open deliberately. I know her, she is never nice to me. She is abrupt, and hateful in all of our exchanges. Her being pleasant, tipped me off, and I saw that the door was open. I wanted him to hear what I said. I wanted him to know that her actions will have consequences for him now that she is running amok. What are you talking about, Reagan? I heard Aaron say from inside the office. He is hiding in there because he knows that I am furious about what happened to Trevor. He doesn't want Aloise to be mad at him. She controls him, and it is a shame that he allows her to do it. You heard me clearly, Aaron. I didn't stutter, and I didn't whisper. I already knew you were listening in on our conversation when she spoke to me with courtesy. She usually speaks to me very ugly, so it isn't hard to figure out why she was being nice this one time. You will not stop her, so apparently I have to. I will not allow my pups to be hurt, or killed by her, so her wimpy kid can be alpha. Austin is almost six years old, and more of a crybaby than my youngest pup. She will do anything to make that happen, and your pack will be destroyed at that time. Your mate is an ugly and vindictive woman, and I will not stand back and allow her to continue what she is doing I looked Aloise dead in the face as I spoke. She tried to act like she wasn't scared, but I can smell the fear coming off of her. She honestly didn't think I knew, I have known this whole time. As I said, they really are not that bright. 
I was waiting on him to join in the conversation. I knew he was listening, but he is so scared of pissing her off, that he just lets her do whatever she wants. The irony of this situation is not lost on me. I was Aloise in my prior life. Raven was hurt and abused in that same life. I know that the goddess is trying to teach me some life lessons here, but I just can't when it comes to my babies. I do not know how mom managed to not lose it on dad for allowing the pack members, and me, to do what we did to Raven. She must either have amazing control of her emotions or just didn't give a st about Raven. Maybe it was a little of both, but that was over and done with now. I have pressing matters to speak to him about. He needs to stop being a wuss when it comes to Aloise, or I will fight her. He knows better than to let it get that far. I have never put my hands on your children. That is a blatant lie Aloise said and turned to give her puppy dog eyes at Aaron, who was now at his office door. Her pout is exaggerated, and she is acting like she is going to cry. I think he gets it from his mom, so Austin might just become a good actor, like his mom, I said with my tone dripping with sarcasm. Reagan, you need to remember your place, and speak with respect to your Luna, Aaron said with anger in his tone. I do remember my place, Aaron. I was the breeder you wanted to give you strong pups. I will not sit back and let this horrible woman kill one of my pups before you realize what a snake you have received as a mate I replied back to him what are you talking about? Aloise was there, she said that Trevor fell while running on the stairs. She didn't do anything to him. I believe her, he is a fast little guy, and he probably was running on the stairs Aaron said to me. Yes, you believe her again. That is the very problem that I am here to visit with you about. Because I happen to believe my son, who told me that he was shoved by her on the stairs causing him to fall. Instead of listening to either one of them, how about we just review the video from yesterday on the stairwell? That is what I would have done. Video doesn't lie, and it doesn't take sides. I know we have cameras there, but maybe Aloise didn't I said to them both. I watched her pale at the mention of us reviewing what actually happened yesterday. I saw her tense up, and I know Aaron felt it, as he looked down at her. But still, he said nothing. He was taking her side in it, he was not going to do anything about it yet again. I will look into it myself. I will get back to you on it Aaron said, and she relaxed into his side and gave me a smug smile. Well that is going to be a problem for me, Aaron. You know I don't come to the pack house, as it brings back some really bad memories. I am willing to take the nightmares that I know are coming from this visit to the Alpha Floor, to come and help my children pack up to come and live with me in my home. I have to protect them, even if you won't. I will have my dad come out with an architect and have my home increased to accommodate everyone, but they will all be coming home with me today I told him, and now he stiffened up at my words. I will not let you take my children away from me, Regan. They are fine here. I told you that I would investigate it, and get back to you on it. You can trust me. They are my children too, and I have protected them for years Aaron said. I trust you more than I trust her, but since my trust in her is zero, I just can't take the risk. You heard me, you can come and see them whenever you want. The only stipulation I have is that when she is with you, the nanny, Clive, or I have to be present. I only have our pup's best interest at heart. You are busy all of the time. It is more of a power thing, to just possess them and have them here, than wanting to actually spend time with them. You can come to my house when you have some downtime to be able to see them. I am not running away with them. I am protecting them, from an actual threat I told him, and my voice is colder than ice to him now. Just let me check it out myself, I promise you, Regan, 
that I will be impartial, Aaron said, and Aloise stiffened up again. I kept my focus on her, to let him know that even though he felt it, I saw it. She knows she did wrong and is terrified of him seeing her in action. How about we all go in there, right now, and watch it together, Aaron? No need to investigate. No need to waste my time, or come up with even more excuses, like I know you will. I will not be leaving the pack house without my children. Seems like you have plenty of time to stand here in the hallway and argue, so let's step into the office and just check real quick. We both know that this will take about three to five minutes for you to find it, and we can all watch it. No need to discuss it anymore. She was scared to death when you first mentioned the investigation. Her reaction, both times, was not lost on you or me. You already know, right now, that she did it. Before you can even see the video if you haven't already watched it. But I would like for us all to go ahead and take a look at it, together I told him. I am using my alpha tone. I have never pulled it out here at Blood Tracker. I have been held down, ignored, and suppressed for too freaking long. I can take it when it is my punishment, but I will be damned if my babies get hurt by this BH again. I will do it myself, Regan. You can rest assured that it will be dealt with if anything intentional happened to Trevor. I can promise you that Aaron said quietly to me, trying to calm me down, but we are way past that now. Like you dealt with all the other incidents, Aaron? All their many injuries. Injuries that I noted the time, date, and what she did. I took photographs of all of them, Aaron. I am done playing nice. I did that for a while and it got me and my children nowhere. I trusted you to handle it. But you never did. You value her, over your own offspring. The very offspring that you insisted that you had to have to run this pack after you stepped down. You wanted strong heirs to make the pack grow, and become even stronger. But you didn't protect them. You might have started off trying to fix it for them, but you can't, because when it comes to her, or your pups, you have always chosen her. That is fine, you can choose her. You just need to let me take our children away before she does something that can't be fixed the next time. She will not be stopping until one of them is really hurt. You will either go look at the video now, in front of both of us, or I will have to take my children out of here today I told him, and he stiffened up. I was challenging him, and he did not like it. Reagan do not forget your place. You have no way to command me to do anything. I will deal with it, just go back to your home, and I will check on it myself. I promise you that if what Trevor said was correct. I will deal with it Aaron said, and he was imploring me to listen. He wanted this to go away, and he probably would warn her, finally, after all this time. But I will not agree with it. I am done now. They are not safe here, and they can only be safe with me and Clive. I know that now. She is furious and glaring at me for pushing the issue. She is a mother, and I can tell you right now that if I put one hand on her son or daughter, she would scream this place down. I would be put in a cell somewhere, and not released for a while. I would be beaten until Aaron came to check on me himself. I see the smirk come back up at what he had said. She already knows that he will sweep this under the rug, just like the other times I have come out here. There are forgetting that the gloves are off now. I am done with them both. They forget that I know the rules of the pack, inside and out, and neither one of them, are smarter than I am. Aloise wants to see what happens when you fk with my pups, then I hope that she enjoys the show because we have had people eavesdropping on our conversation this whole time. I know that by tonight this will have raced through the pack, and I almost can't stop the smile from crossing my face, at them being stupid enough to hold this conversation in the hallway for all to hear. 
that was really stupid on their part. Aaron you will either let us all watch the video together, and allow me to take my pups to my home now, or there will be consequences today for it, I told him, and his mouth dropped open in shock. It was a direct threat, and I didn't pull my punch. Yeah, okay. I can't see where you have any room to argue with me on this. You need to stop now, or you will be the one who is facing consequences Aaron said back to me. You leave me no choice, I didn't want to have to do this, but I, Reagan Sullivan, breeder for the Blood Tracker Pack, challenge you, Aloise Daniels, current Luna of the Blood Tracker Pack, to fight to the death for the position of Luna. I will see you out on the training grounds today at 5 p.m. I told them. I am enjoying watching the blood drain from both their faces, as Aaron now clues in on just how deadly serious I truly am about this. Chapter 100 Reagan's POV The look on her face was priceless. She knows that my wolf, Lena, will be ripping her apart, in no uncertain terms. She doesn't train she depends on Aaron to protect her. What she doesn't realize right now, is that I am mad enough to fight with him, to get to her. I am willing to take my chances on the outcome of fighting with him, it may not be to the death, but we will both be getting hurt in the fight. After I got attacked, I never wanted to be defenseless again. It was truly a nightmare that night, and I believed that I was going to die. I threw myself into training after that. Clive is one of the best fighters here at Blood Tracker. He oversaw all of my training, and I didn't stop, until I could protect myself from at least two adversaries. I even trained while I was pregnant. I was never going to let myself be in the position of being vulnerable again. I haven't, and I had gone back to training two weeks after giving birth, each and every time. It helped me keep my figure, and I learned that I can work around pain very well. I may not be popular here, but I am strong, and I am tough. No one wants to challenge me any more from the women here, and I spar with the men. I may not win every time, but I give the majority of them a run for their money. I already know what he will do now. He will have to back down, or I will kill his mate. I will think nothing of it either. She has been a thorn in my side for six years. Six years of him deferring to her, allowing her to keep hurting our pups whenever she wanted to. He thought that I had nothing I could do to her, as she was the Luna, but he was wrong. From the sounds of all the gasps in the hallway, some of them are excited to see it too. Aloise is not well liked here, and it is her own fault. She is only kind to Aaron, and the beta couple, Darren and Judy. I had already spoken to Clive about this before I left today. This was my last resort to show Aaron just how freaking serious I was about this. This was my Hail Mary pass at the end of the game. I know that they both knew why I was coming out here to the pack house. She thought that this was going to be like all the other times, and it wasn't. I am officially done, and I am fully intending on ending her today they both really thought that I was going to let it go, and let it be. They're wanting to do this outside of the office and ignore my requests over and over again didn't work out in their favor, at all this time. I was not going to back down again. Trevor could have broken his neck, instead of his arm as he reached out to stop his fall down to the first floor. This ends today. I am good with however they wanted to play it out. All of my cards were on the table, and I won this hand. Either I get my children out from under their roof, or I will be killing his precious mate, tonight. Those are his options, and I already knew what he was going to choose. He does not want to lose his piece of ST mate, so I will be packing my children up and bringing them to safety home now. I am going to tell him that I am bringing the nanny along with them. I am going to need some help with eight kids all under ten, under one roof. You can't challenge me, you are just the breeder here. 
you can't do that Aloise screeched out. She was almost stuttering in her bad attempt at trying to stop the ball I started rolling. I can, and I will. Anyone can challenge Luna for her position, at any time. I have tried and tried to stop you from hurting my pups. You have been doing it since two weeks after you arrived over the last six years. You have gotten progressively worse, and Aaron here hasn't even tried to stop you at all. Any she-wolf that has had children will understand that I will fight for my pups. If you think that I will go easy on you, think again. I predict that Lena will have your head ripped from your body in less than a minute, but I personally would like her to toy with you first. Just like you keep toying with my pups. You are a threat to them, all of them. You hate them, you hate all of my pups with Aaron, and would like nothing more than for them to not exist. Just because Aaron refuses to watch the videos that I have, or is not willing to see how you really are behind closed doors does not mean that I have no recourse with you. We can check the pack bylaws book to verify it, but I already know the answer. Do not forget, I am not just a breeder I was to be a Luna. I studied, and I know the rules, and the bylaws, probably better than you do Aloise. The game is now over for you, you have crossed the line with what you did to Trevor yesterday. Either my children come to live with me, their nanny included. Or you need to go and have S asterisk X with Aaron again, kiss your pups goodbye, oh, and have a nice meal, because I guarantee that it will be your last I told her in an almost bored tone. I wanted her to realize that she was as good as dead in my eyes. She was of no concern to me anymore. Lena will kill her, and Aaron could not step in and stop this for her. She has crossed me too many times, and since he is not willing to man up, I will do it for him. She will not be getting her hands on my kids again. I refuse to accept your challenge, Reagan. I won't fight you. I am sorry that you think that I did something to Trevor. But I never put my hands on him. I swear I didn't Aaron Aloise is now in a panic. She is clutching at him and trying to get him to protect her. She is too dumb to know that he can't protect her unless he is willing to give his children up. I hated to have to flex like this, but I had to. They both left me no other choice. She is scared out of her mind because she knows that I am absolutely serious about what I said, and I am. Aaron knows it too, and he is trying to figure a way out of it for her but just because I am no longer a ranked wolf, I can still challenge her. I am way stronger than her, and she is going to piss herself when she sees Lena coming for her. That is easy enough to prove, we can all go into the office, and watch the video. If you didn't push him, I will even apologize to you for accusing you falsely. But we both know you did it. You also thought that this was like any of the 20 plus times I have shown up here to complain about the treatment of my babies. What you didn't realize is that I am done, you could have killed him yesterday, and I am quite sure that was your actual intent. There is no use discussing it anymore Aaron. Let's go watch the video. There is no reason to not watch it together unless Aaron is willing to admit that he is fully aware of how evil you are and how he allows you to get away with it each and every time. I am done with this. Although I do have to say, that after everything you have done to my sons, I am totally okay with killing you I told her, and I could hear Aaron growl at me. He was warning me because I threatened her. I did go a little too far, I did just threaten the Luna, but the gauntlet has been thrown down. My challenge has been issued and either Aaron backs down and lets me get my children, or he will be losing his Luna today. I didn't want to be his Luna, and I had mentioned it when I had told Clive what I was intending on doing. He was worried as he thought that Aaron had a special affection for me. He was worried that since I was more attractive than Aloise, even with the scar taking some of my beauty away, Aaron might secretly want me back. I didn't believe that for a second. 
he has rose-colored glasses on when it comes to her. She can clearly do no wrong in his eyes, which is why I have to do it this way. Aaron has a hard choice to make, because as soon as he makes his decision, our pups will know exactly who he values, and sadly it won't be them. I hate that they will have to realize that, it was a slap in the face to know that your dad would rather keep a woman who is just fine with hurting small children around him. Instead of his own flesh and blood, especially the heir to the pack. Who would have ever thought that I would be a good mom? I certainly didn't. But with each life that I brought into the world, I just bonded with them. Their needs are greater than mine. My spoiled days are over, and I was willing to do whatever was needed to make sure that my children had what they needed, and occasionally spoiled with what they wanted. Usually, my parents did that, and I realized that I was going to have to contact them again, so they know to get presents for the additional four that are now going to be under my roof when they come back to visit. Reagan, please, let's just go into my office, and talk this out. I love my pups, as much as you do. I do not want to lose them over a misunderstanding between us Aaron tried to talk to me in a soothing tone. Oh, now you care about your children. Well isn't that a nice surprise, but am not leaving here without my children Aaron. We are not negotiating here. You have two options, and we already know that you will be choosing to save her, and let them go. It is in their best interest for them to live with me, Aaron. You know what she has done, even if you are not willing to admit it. She is not going to stop until she really hurts someone, Aaron. I know that you told her that since you were close to 30 when you found her, you had made arrangements to make sure you had an heir. I am sure she wasn't happy about that fact, but you cannot close your eyes to what she is doing. She is dangerous, and she will keep going and attempting to get rid of our babies until her son is next in line to be Alpha. How is that right? Or fair to any of them? They are sitting ducks here, I can't just let them stay, and wait on her to kill them off one at a time. I am their mother, it is my job to protect them too, Aaron. If you are not willing, or able, to do it. Please stop trying to block me from protecting them. You can come to my house any time you want to. I am not leaving the pack with them. They are staying right here, I am just making sure that they get to be old enough to protect themselves from her I told him, and pointed right at Aloise. She growled in fury at me literally calling her out, and we have a crowd now. There are at least fifteen people, probably more standing in the shadows of the hallway. They are on either end of us in the hallway, watching this play out. I can see Aaron's face contort in pain, as he really didn't want to give them up. He does love them, and before she came here, he took very good care of them. But from almost the moment she arrived, she moved them further down the hall from him. She made them eat earlier, so he couldn't see them. She manipulated his time and got pregnant as quickly as she could, because she really believed as his mate, that it would be her pups who took over the pack. When she found out differently, she was furious. She is dangerous, and I will not allow this to go on any longer. I tried to do this the nice way. I am done being nice. I wish you would reconsider this, Reagan. I would still like to investigate this allegation Aaron spoke calmer to me, as he now noticed that we were not alone in the hallway. He knew as well as I did, that the whole pack would not only know about it, but they would all be there for the fight if he didn't give up our pups to me. You can run into your office and investigate all you want. We both know she did it and thought that she would be getting away with it, again. She will not. Hey. I will go in there with you, as I need to record it for myself, so I can have the documentation of what happened this time too. A copy for my files, if you will. But even if you investigate all day long, it changes nothing. 
you are either going to lose your pups, or your mate, today. Stop dragging your feet Aaron, we all already know what you chose. You chose her like you have all the other times that she hurt one of our little ones, and you did nothing about it. Stop acting shocked that I finally had enough. I know that you will do nothing to her in punishment, even after you watch her push our innocent son down the stair on the video. At most, you will give her a slap on the wrist, and make her realize to pick a better location for her next attempt. I am not giving that BH the opportunity. I am done here. Decide, now, so I can go up and pack my pup's stuff up and take them home where they can finally be able to rest easy, and not have to sleep with one eye open I told him. Aaron really seems upset by my words, like I came up with all of this st on my own. He never even asked his kids what happened. Each and every time I would confront him about an injury, he would take what she said as the truth. I know because each time I came to his office to speak to him about it, I would wait two to three weeks and then ask them if he has asked them for their side of the story. He never did. He is the reason that we are here now. If he had cared, he would have nipped this in the bud. Telling her that whatever she did to our pups, would be done to hers. That would have stopped her cold. I even suggested it, and he got furious at me, for threatening his children with his mate. Like ours weren't being threatened by her every day. Either you can, or you can't threaten children slash if she can do it to mine. I should be able to do it to hers, that is only fair. I do care about my pups. I love them, Regan, you don't understand. This is killing me Aaron said and his voice caught with a slight sob. I believe that he loves them. He needs to love them enough, to let me protect him from her. Aaron, let me ask you this. You have common sense, so just humor me. With any of the times I came to you with proof of what she did, did you ever once ask any of our children that had been hurt, what happened to them? Even one time, or did you always ask her? I scoffed at him, as I pointed in her direction and let him know that I already knew the answer before I asked the question. You believed whatever smoke that she wanted to blow up your A asterisk S. I already know the answer Aaron because I did ask them if you had asked. Each and every time that she would hurt them, you never once asked them if she had hurt them. Never once did you actually believe what I told you, never once did you take their side over hers, even when you knew she did it. I bet you already watched what happened on the stairs, didn't you? I can tell from your expression right now, that you did. I bet the video is gone now, isn't it? That is why you won't let me see it. You deleted it to protect her. Wow, that is disgusting. You call it now, Aaron. Right now, because if not, I won't wait to do it outside, or until 5 p.m. They will be cleaning her blood from this hallway, as I will bring the fight here, right now I told him and I was yelling at him by the end. I see that she knows that Lena is right there. I can feel her power right there pushing out into the hallway. I can see the crowd taking me at my word and they are moving back away from us, but still staying close enough to watch the show. I can phase very quickly and I swear to the goddess that even if he tries to stop me, I will kill her before he can kill me. I will protect my pups to my dying breath and he sees it in my eyes. The showdown is now, he will comply with what I am telling him, or I hope that their last time together in his office was good, because I am ending her. Aaron steps forward with his hands up and palms out towards me and said, You win, I will let them live with you. Don't kill her Lena, it is okay. No one will be hurting your pups anymore. It was as much an admission of guilt for their Luna as they would get. Everyone present understood that I was right, and she had been hurting my pups to get us here to this moment. The crowd had been on her side at first, 
but the whispers were spreading on both sides of the hallway about their Luna. Herding pups was hugely frowned upon, and completely unacceptable. They knew what I had been brought here to do. They knew that my pups were strong and that I was completely serious about what I said. Why Aaron had digged around so long before letting me have them, was unacceptable. I will discuss that later with him one on one. For now, I am happy with getting my babies to safety. I bet that he watched all of the incidences where she hurt our babies, but he believed her when she said that she would stop. He was an IT then because she was never planning on stopping. Only when our boys had all been killed, leaving Austin to take over the pack would she have stopped. She would have left my youngest pup with Aaron, Colette alone. Since she was a girl, and with their backward A S pack, she couldn't be Alpha. That honor would have to go to her mate. Since she and Austin were so close in age, I am sure that Aloise would have found a reason for Austin to take over the pack. I can actually understand it myself. I did the same thing at Silver Blade. I know how her heart is. I see her, I know her because I was her. That is why she couldn't fool me. I didn't believe her for a second. Was I drastic in getting my kids out of here to protect them? Yes, I was, but I knew it had to be done. Will Aaron get mad at her and finally punish her for all she has done here? Goddess only knows. I am pretty sure that she will get another pass. I could care less because I won this round. I don't care if she starts training right now, she will never be as strong as me, Lena will take her apart if it ever comes down to it. I will not let her off the hook again. If she crosses the line, I will make sure that she never gets another chance to do it again. I will be sure to give Erin a heads up on it, as she will have earned every bit of what she is going to get. I felt her fear just now. She finally felt my full strength as I let my alpha power loose in the hallway when I warned her that I would kill her right here. Aaron made a bad decision today. That will be between him and our pups. He will have to tell them that he picked her lying a s over them, and I won't poison their mind over it. He will have to ask for their forgiveness when he finally clues in on what he has done. The boys already felt that he didn't love them because he didn't protect them from his mate. Now that their lives are completely uprooted, and changed, it will be even harder on their relationship. But I did what I needed to protect my pups. I will always put their needs before my own. I know that this is going to be coming for me. I am okay with it because when she attacks me, I have every right to defend myself. I won't be reining Lena in either. I am going to let Lena do what she needs to so my babies don't have to look over their shoulders all the time. They will only be safe after she is gone. I made an enemy today, but she already was, from the moment she arrived. What she doesn't realize is she has made one out of me too today. I was going to let her go until she pulled what she did yesterday. I will fight fake with fake and we will see who comes out on top. Chapter 101 Cheryl's POV I see Blake heading my way, and he is angry again. He is angry all the time now. I already know why, it is always the same reason, over and over again. He is a very jealous man, and instead of staying glad that he was my first, and only. He has been on a kick for the last three years over Brandon. He will not let it go, I mean we have been together for almost exactly ten years now. I have loved him, and only him, for ten years. I also know who is behind it, it isn't rocket science. There is only one person here that is willing and able to get people to do what he wants and is willing to cause problems doing it. Ever since Reagan told Blake about me waiting and holding out to be Luna for Black Adder, he has had a problem with Brandon. It was fine for years, and then all of a sudden, four years ago, Blake just started up about Brandon. He even went to Black Adder for free training there, 
to see Brandon in real life. Imagine his shock when he got to meet Raven there too. He completely forgot that Reagan had a twin, and actually called Aaron to make sure that Reagan was still in his pack as soon as he left Black Adder. He liked Justin during the training and felt bad as he realized that he was the one who Reagan had drugged first. He wanted to speak to him about Reagan but didn't want to let them know that he knew who she was. Blake and his pack had had no interaction before her disappearance. If he had mentioned it, they would have figured out eventually that he had knowledge of where she had gone. Travis was the one to go to Black Adder next as he liked going and learning new fighting techniques. Thankfully, Blake had warned Travis about Raven. But unfortunately, Travis instantly thought that Raven was a stunner too the moment he saw her. He had had such a crush on Reagan, that he became a little enamored of Raven very quickly. I heard what had happened there that day accidentally. Even though Travis was fully mated, he kept trying to flirt with Raven while he was there. It caused a problem. He was kicked out of the training for a comment he made to her, and now they have a problem with Justin too. It happened two years ago, but they are still mad at how Justin took Travis down while sparring with him over his vulgar comment. Travis had never heard of someone having two mates, and said something that he shouldn't have in front of Justin. When he got home and was clearly beaten up, Blake and his ranked members were pretty pissed off. Travis' mate, Paige, was also mad because she could read between the lines. Travis had been there for three trainings already with no problems. She had heard about his little crush on Reagan, as he had admitted it when they first met and got to know each other. When she overheard Travis telling what actually happened there at Black Adder to Blake, she was pissed at him and wanted to go and kick Raven's A S herself for attracting Travis. Why she didn't get angry at Travis for being over the top and flirting with Raven in front of one of her mates, is a mystery. Paige felt that Raven must have flirted with Travis or done something to have caused that to happen. She hated Reagan too but knew that she was being properly punished at Blood Tracker. We had to talk her down from going to Black Adder to fight Raven. I remember firsthand, what a big mistake that would have been for Paige to try to attack Raven. I already knew why it was a problem for him. He had real feelings for Reagan. If Reagan had stayed here, and not done what she did, they would have probably taken each other as chosen mates. He just drug his feet about it, as Garrett and Mark couldn't stand her, from day one. I was pissed at her as well, but I started feeling guilty about what we had done to her the last few years. Did she do wrong? Absolutely, but she was a spoiled diva, who had been given everything she ever wanted in life. Bar none, she always got what she wanted, no matter what means she had to use to accomplish it. She had done a lot of wrongs in her life, but honestly, I had too, just not as many as she did. I had just excused mine, as I thought I was doing it out of love. I just was obsessed and had a massive crush on him. I love Blake, and he is the only man that I have ever loved. I heard about what happened to her at Blood Tracker that first day, and I shuddered at the thought of it. That would have been horrible for anyone, but I heard Garrett when he relayed that Michael had called and bragged about basically RG her, I almost threw up when I heard it. It was disgusting that they thought that was okay. Then Mark mentioned to Blake that he and Garrett had added a few things to what they told Michael, to get him to cause her more grief there. It came to a head when they found out what all Michael had done to her. He believed everything that they had said about her, all the embellishments, and a few made-up things. He accepted all of it as the honest truth, and he felt that she needed to be punished. I think that he allowed himself to do his worst with the excuse of her deserving it, whether she did or not. It gave him an out, and I bet he thought if it ever came back on him, that he would push his actions back onto Garrett, and Mark, as the reason why he had done it. They were stunned when they had been notified that he had been killed. 
they did feel pretty bad for what happened to her. She got badly injured all because of what they did. But they would never be getting punished for it. Blake was still furious at her for what she had done. He was angry about the lies she told, and for causing me to almost lose our firstborn child from the pain of his betrayal. That in itself was the most unforgivable part of her plan, and he truly doesn't care what happens to her. But the clear fact that shows up, over and over again here, is that women are secondary. Even as their mates, we are still women, and therefore not as important as them. That is not a very good message to be sending to our children. I still think that they should be getting in a lot of trouble for trying to manipulate Michael into punishing her. Knowing what all happened to her, and seeing a picture of all of her injuries was hard. I won't lie, seeing what had happened to her, was just disgusting, and I almost lost my lunch. I have heard that she has changed a lot these days and that she has become a model pack member. She finally learned to train, and Clive dotes on her. I believe that he really loves her. She had been dealt with, and I know who needs to be dealt with next. Graham, as he is the one starting a problem between us. The CK in our relationship has grown with each passing year. Blake wants to compare himself to Brandon in all things. From the size of our packs, to who is a physically strong alpha. He is acting crazy these days and the possessiveness is not cute. It is unreasonable and frustrating to me. He keeps acting like I am waiting for an opportunity to run off, so I can be with Brandon. The truth is, I love Blake, very much. I was never planning on leaving him or cheating on him. I know how badly that hurts, I still remember the pain of it when Blake cheated on me, to punish me for my actions when Reagan tricked him. For such a smart man, that was completely stupid on his part. I can hear him coming down the hallway now before I can even see him. Where are you, woman? Cheryl, answer me, right now. Where are you? I hear his booming voice ringing through the corridor. It is ridiculous for me to even try to answer him. He doesn't stop talking for me to even be able to answer him anyway. He does this every time he can't see me when he wants me, calling out for me as he heads for our room. There is no point in it, but it is a daily occurrence. I just wait for him, as I don't live in the corridor, I live in our room. I am not going to go out there into the hallway and encourage his behavior. He acts as if he can never find me when I have not left this pack in ten years. I wonder what the pack members think of it, but I say nothing about it. That is where I am with our children. We are all sitting at the table and waiting for him to arrive, to be able to eat our dinner. Every once in a while, I enjoy cooking our meal instead of us going to the dining room. Usually when one of the children, or I, is craving something specific to eat. Blake is very easygoing, he will eat anything that I put in front of him. With the exception of his jealousy, he really is a perfect mate. He smiles as he sees all of us at the table and immediately comes to the table to sit at the head of the table. He is happy now, all is right in his world but he needs to calm down a lot. He needs to just let his jealousy of Brandon go. I haven't thought of Brandon since I got with Blake. Blake is my everything, and I am glad that I found him. But no matter how many times I tell him that, he ignores my words and my actions. Now that I have been dealing with it for over three years, it is very stressful for me now. If he can see me, it is fine. But if he can't see me, he honestly thinks that I have run off to be with Brandon. I had no idea why, until he slipped up the other day and admitted that he had been told accidentally about what all I had done to try to get with Brandon. Including me losing my true mate, and my second chance mate, just to have him. He doesn't care that I only love him now, or that Brandon has a true mate that he absolutely loves. 
it is all about what Blake's perceptions are about it. The doubt that plagues him, despite me telling him constantly how much I love him, concerns me. It is like he is losing control, of his actions, and his mind. All for no good reason. I wanted for us to go somewhere on vacation, just the two of us, and leave the kids behind for us to strengthen our bond, and reconnect. I was even going to let him pick the destination. He then immediately accused me of wanting to do this as a plan to get away from Black Moon, to be able to meet Brandon somewhere for us to hook up. Blake is getting worse and worse in his paranoia, and I reached out to my parents for help with trying to talk to him. I told Dad the whole story of the fact that Graham is behind this. He is sabotaging my relationship, deliberately. I know that this is his payback for what happened with Reagan, but I was the victim in that too, and so was Blake. She drugged him, she got what she deserved from it. Graham had wanted her to live, she is still alive. Dad tried to talk to Blake, but it didn't work out. Blake is pretty much delusional right now when it comes to me. Even when his ranked wolves vouched for me, that I have never left the pack since I got here ten years ago. You would think that he would acknowledge that it was absolutely impossible for me to have been able to cheat on him, but you would be wrong. Every night after we got to bed, he checks my phone, or during dinner, as he said he didn't want me to have time to delete any suspicious texts. He has never found any suspicious texts, in the last three years, and yet he just keeps looking and checking my phone. It is upsetting to constantly be accused of cheating, especially when he knows he has never felt the pain associated with it. That doesn't factor in for him either. It is real in his head, so I have to be cheating. Living like this is causing stress for me and our children. It is not fair to any of us to have to go through this. When I asked Blake to not listen to Graham, telling him that he is trying to set him up. Blake tells me that I am being difficult. I know that Graham blames me and Blake for everything that has happened to Reagan at Blood Tracker. We never wished for any of that to happen to her, and we never knew that Garrett and Mark had an agenda against her, but Reagan is not blameless. He needs to take his own head out of his A asterisk S and realize that she is the apple off of his own tree. He created that monster. He covered for her, protected her, and made her think that she could do whatever she wanted, with no penalty for her actions. I thought after we had to run away from Silver Blade, she would wise up, but she didn't. She still stayed just as cocky as she ever was. She only appreciated me for protecting her from being attacked by Sierra. She didn't appreciate me for anything else. She has always been a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately kind of girl in the short time that I knew her. She only helped me try to get Brandon because she absolutely hated her sister, Raven, and Brandon was Raven's second-chance mate. Not because she felt bad for me, or wanted to help me out in any kind of way always expecting others to bow and defer to her. That is just not how real life is, and I hope to the goddess that she is a better mother than she was a person. I honestly worry about her babies. I was glad that she had Clive, as she was basically alone there. We make it through dinner with each of the kids telling Blake something funny about their day. I like to do this as he has a stressful enough time as the alpha of our pack. I try to keep him calm, and he appreciates that very much. He loves our babies, we had three boys, and our Forrest will be the next Alpha. Forrest is ten years old now, and Kevin is nine. I really wish he was nicer to Kevin than he is, but he is so much tougher on him than any of our children. Robert is eight years old, and a very happy kid. He doesn't get into the competition against each other like Forrest and Kevin do. He goes at his own pace, and our baby girl Casey is five years old. She is a sweetheart, and she is me made over. We just had her birthday last week, and she is daddy's girl. 
when he is super stressed out, he will come to play with her. They will play with dolls or have a tea party, it helps him to calm down. I hope tonight will go smoothly, but I can tell that his smile doesn't reach his eyes. It will not be a good night for me. He pretends to be happy for the children. He has Forrest and Casey right next to him, and Kevin and Robert are at my end of the table. I know that it hurts Kevin how hard his dad is on him. He is a very competent, and strong kid. He is smart and respectful. He is just as good at fighting and sparring as Forrest is, and yet Blake will never acknowledge him. It is like he can only see Forrest as qualified to be his replacement. Leaving the other two boys with me, and they are not needed. It is hurtful to both of them, and I can feel Kevin's pain. It is going to come to a head one day, I already know. It is going to be bad when he does see K. Kevin is very angry for a kid who is only nine years old. He is getting to the point where he literally hates Forrest. Forrest taunts and teases him, and it is not endearing him to Kevin at all. I think that Forrest is just as cocky as his father is. Maybe that is why they are so connected. Forrest looks a lot like Blake. Kevin doesn't, he looks like me, as does Casey. I am going to have to talk to Blake about how he treats Kevin, again. It is disappointing how much he wants his father to love him and Blake just completely refuses to acknowledge him. I don't know what his malfunction is, but he is ruining his relationship with his own son. It will come to a head soon enough, I can already feel it. My father did the same thing with my brother and me, he doted on Leander, but never on me. He doesn't mention it now, but he is still heartbroken over my brother refusing to leave Blackadder with us. Leander has pups now of his own now, but my parents will never get to see them. Leander made his own decision. Just like Dad and I did. I was willing to do what Dad said, and Dad wanted me to be the next Luna for Black Adder, even if I was never meant to be the Luna there. It didn't matter that Brandon and I were not mates. Dad picked a chosen mate for himself, and he felt that Mom was perfect for him. I see Blake looking at me, and I know that look. He wants me tonight, and I am fine with it, but we will need to speak after that. Once he found out that I planned to leave him, over what Reagan did, he has been paranoid ever since that one day I will be leaving. Even though I have never left the pack in the last ten years, he still thinks it. I love being close to Blake. I still think that he is one of the most handsome men that I have ever seen. I wish he would calm down about me leaving him, if I hadn't done it already, I probably won't be doing it now. He just needs to calm down, and love me and the kids. Unless he pushes me to do it, I will never leave him. Chapter 102 Cheryl's POV dinner was nice, and we all watched a movie together after that. He helped me bathe Casey, and get the rest of our kids in the shower, one at a time. It was a nice night, other than the fact that Blake does the same thing each time we tuck them in together. We always start with Casey for the story as she is the youngest and the easiest to get to sleep. He rubs her back as I read the story to her while the boys finish their showers and got dressed for bed. We go into the boys' room next. Two bunk beds one on either side of the room. I see my poor Kevin is on the bottom bunk across the room, alone. Robert is sleeping above Forrest now for some reason. He used to sleep in the bunk above Kevin. It was because Forrest always picked on both of his younger brothers. Robert actually gets along better with Kevin than he does with Forrest. But the unspoken cues that Robert is getting from his father about Kevin, are making him distance himself from him lately. My heart breaks for my beautiful little boy. Kevin was such a happy, bright boy, but feeling his father's constant disapproval of him for the last few years is hurting him so much. He never complains about it. 
he just tries to work so much harder at training just to get a little approval. Even a small compliment, would help him out so much. But each week it just gets worse, and Forrest gets even cockier about being his father's clear favorite. There is a clear conflict, and disconnect, between Blake and Kevin. I have got to get to the bottom of it. I just cannot stand by and allow it to continue any more. Something is going to have to be done quickly to salvage their relationship. Blake is doing incredible harm to both himself and Kevin, with his actions. I need to know why, no, I have to know why this is happening. We kiss the boys good night, with the fact that Blake couldn't do anything but pat Kevin on his slim shoulder before we left the room. I am so disappointed in Blake that I could honestly cry right now. I am angry at how callous he is. How could he treat his own son like that? I head in to go take my shower and I am so overwhelmed and upset. I stood there in the shower crying, to cover my tears. I usually do this anyway, as people don't usually notice your tears in the shower. I do it a lot these days especially when Blake has gone too far with his words to me in the heat of an argument. We never argued before, he loved me, and I loved him, our world was good. Graham is single-handedly tearing my family apart, and I just cannot allow it. I will be speaking to him about this, as he better watch it. I am Luna here, and I know that he is a PAC member and I can't just throw him out, but still, there were penalties for crossing the Luna. Blake depends on Graham's money to get his dream pack. Every extra around here was provided by Graham. It has been hard to get this done before because when I did approach Graham to discuss why he is poisoning Blake, I got yelled at, by my own mate. Blake picked his golden goose over me. The pack has all that it needs, and then some. Graham has money to burn, and he doesn't mind making things better around here. During the argument, I suggested that Graham and Cassandra could go live with Reagan at Blood Tracker and Blake lost his mind. He was not going to let Graham leave here. He won't let him put his funds in to make Aaron's pack even bigger. Aaron had been catching up to him as far as pack strength, and Blake was not happy about it. He was angry that Aaron had increased his pack by almost double what it was, ten years ago. Aaron didn't have to be as selective as Blake had to be. Blake had five PAC members who were wanted by the council. He did not want to be reported and lose his golden goose. He couldn't just let anyone in. But from what I had heard from Cassandra, Reagan stayed in her home, or went to training, but only trained with Clive. She was not well known as anything but their best fighter there, which blew my mind. She had always been so worried about her appearance before and not wanting to sweat, or look bad in front of others, that she never trained. I guess the trauma of not being able to protect herself changed her a lot. I can understand that too. I have changed a lot as well in the last ten years, especially the last three years. I was so happy before, and now I have become a shell of myself. Scared to piss Blake off not allowed around any other men except my dad, Graham, and the ranked wolves. I can also interact with the head trainer here, Wesley, but that is it. Blake is so jealous of any male that is near me, that I have to pay attention at all times. Even if someone gets near me in the dining room while I am getting my food. No one wants a repeat of what happened last year. An innocent young warrior had gotten hurt after I brush up against him, as I turned to walk back to the table. That innocent exchange almost cost that young man his life. I will never forget the sound of Blake's roar as he rushed over to grab me, and punched him. He never saw Blake coming, and I was the one who had turned to come back to the table and ran into him. It had been my fault and yet he carried a scar from that incident. Blake is completely unreasonable now, and he is getting worse by the day. No matter what, I needed to clear the air between us. We cannot go on like this, 
he is hurting me, and Kevin, for no reason. He has to stop, he has to. I realize that life would be better for me to take my chances away from here. I do my duty for my husband, for my children, and for my pack. I take care of all of them, and I am happy to do it. I will not allow Blake and Graham, to continue to emotionally abuse and gaslight me anymore. I just can't, they are killing me. My whole world is here. Despite that, I do not know how much longer I can stay here, if things don't start changing for the better, and soon. I feel arms wrap around me, and pull me back into him. His desire for me is evident and pressing into my back. We have never had any problems with this part of the relationship. Blake kisses my mark and goes to grab a loofah and the body wash to gently clean me and kissing me passionately intermittently as he cleans and then rinses me off. I need this, I needed him to show me he loved me, even if he doesn't say it to me like he used to. He dries me off, and then even quicker dries himself off too before carrying me into our bedroom. He gets to work kissing me and showing me that he loves me without words. I do the same, as I could never get enough of him if we lived to be 100. His body is amazing, and his passion and dedication to his training are clearly evident. He wants his men to be the strongest that they can be as well. They all want to be just as strong as he is, and his strength is clearly edged all over him. I kiss down his chest and then kneel between his legs to lick the head of his CK. His reaction to it always pleases me. He moans out my name and before he is about to see asterisk M, he stops me. He is looking at my face with love and tenderness and cups my cheek with his hand. I can see it when his expression changes and his love diminishes right before my eyes. He quickly changes our positions and puts me underneath him. He checks me and sees that I am ready to do, but suddenly, he is no longer caring and gentle. He rams right into me, and I cried out, but not in pleasure. He is thrusting into me like he wants to own me or mark me with his body when he has already marked me as his. When he starts speaking, I just don't understand him at all. Do you feel this kind of pleasure with him, Cheryl? He said as he continues his vigorous pace. I looked at him with a frown, as this was not pleasurable to me at all. It hurt, and the fact that he was okay with hurting me, was bringing me to tears. I have no idea who is was talking about, either. My eyes filled with tears as he continued pounding into me. When the first tear fell, he immediately looked upset, but then doubled down, so, I see you miss him, and would rather be with him than me. That will not be happening, Cheryl. You are mine. I will never let you go, you will never leave me, or Black Moon Pack Blake said as he increased his pace even more. This hurt. It was not love-making, or enjoyable. His mind is not right now, and I am scared of him for the first time ever. This is not the man that I have loved for the last ten years. He is fast becoming a monster that is willing to just use my body to get what he wants. The light bulb goes off at that moment. That was Graham's intention all along. His daughter had suffered the same humiliating on Ed Blood Tracker and he wanted me to feel it too. I do, and the pain that I am feeling in my heart is even worse, and it makes me start to sob. This only ended up upsetting Blake even more. In his mind, I am clearly crying for a lover that I missed, when he didn't even realize that it was him that I was crying for. I gave you everything Cheryl, and you betrayed me like this. Brought another man's child here to pass off as my own. How could you do that to me? I loved you so much, and for you to do this to me, I could kill you myself Blake said, and my sobs grew louder. He is using my body and accusing me of cheating on him while he does it. I have never slept with anyone other than him. For him to say that I cheated on him, 
and bore a child for someone else is the most hurtful thing he has ever said to me, other than the words he just spoke. He said he loved me, past tense. That means no longer, but I could feel his love for me earlier while we were in the shower. Graham is good, he is imploding my family from the inside out. I want to kill Graham myself for what he is doing. He is actually much smarter than I ever thought he was, I am in a special now, and I have no idea how to get free from it. I said nothing to him, I did not argue with him because I was hurting from his aggressive moves. I was drying up fast, as I was no longer turned on by my mate. He was scaring me with his words and actions, and I see that Blake is much further along in his anger and frustration with me, than I ever suspected. How did he get here so fast? I closed my mind off to what he was doing and just lay there and let him do what he wanted until he finally roared his release. I immediately turned my back to him and lay on my side while he went into the bathroom. He came back with a rag to clean me, but I didn't want him to touch me again. I took the rag from him, and he seemed angry with that too. I already know that we are about to fight and even if I didn't want to, I guess we needed to get this over and done with. I just f'd you, you are my mate, and now you don't want me to touch you? I will touch you and fk you whenever I want to. I still desire you, even though you have shown what a lying and duplicitous person you are. You should be thankful that I still care for you, and our children. I could have rejected you and found another by now. But Goddess help me, you are the one I want. Stop crying for your lover, and kiss me like you still love me Blake demanded and I felt the bed lower as he sat next to me. Are you serious right now Blake? When did I ever cheat on you? How could I have without you feeling it? I could prove it to you, tomorrow, someone could kiss me, and then you would see that the pain from it is terrible. It is even worse when your mate f's another. I would know, you f'd Reagan, and I was in so much pain that I almost lost Forrest over it. So do not tell me that I chested when between the two of us, it has only been you to do that I told him. How in the world could he just gloss over that fact? He was the cheater between the two of us, and then had the nerve to call me out on it. Wrong answer buddy, wrong answer. That was not my fault, she drugged me, and I was angry at what she had said that you had done. I made a mistake and begged for your forgiveness. I will forgive you too if you would only ask me to, but you have to promise not to be with Brandon ever again Blake said to me in a serious tone. First, I didn't cheat on you when Reagan alleged it, and I have not cheated on you now, not ever Blake. I love you, and I have only been with you and only you. I have never slept with Brandon, and you know this Blake, I was a virgin when I got here. Graham is just poisoning your mind. He is tearing us apart, and you are allowing him to do it. You are allowing him to destroy our family. He has planted seeds of doubt in your mind, and you are watering them for him. He is behind this, and you are allowing him to hurt me. You and your actions are causing me pain Blake. You hurt me just now when we were having s asterisk x. You are punishing me for something that I have never done, and refusing to listen to me when I try to defend myself. I don't know why you would take his side over mine. You know how he is Blake. He is a skillful liar, and you are accepting all of his lies as truths. Please, if you have ever loved me, Blake. Listen to me now I begged him. I love him, and I do not want to lose him. So Graham is the liar, and not you. Blake asked and with his tone, it was obvious that he didn't believe me at all. That was a complete slap in the face. So you would believe a man who was known for lying, scheming, and betrayal, more than your mate. Graham's money is more important to you than your mate is is the better question that needs to be asked I told him quietly. I am about to cry again, 
and I do not like this feeling. I have already lost him before I even knew how badly Graham had dug into Blake's head. He has total control of Blake and my word means nothing to Blake. Trying to defend myself against Graham's lies, cannot be done. In Blake's eyes, I am an adulterer, even with no evidence on his part to support it. I know I have never betrayed him, and my world is crumbling around me now. My children, I have to stay to protect my children, because he will not let me leave. Where would I even go? If I leave, Blake will just hunt me down, and probably physically hurt me in his anger. I never saw this coming, and I am so angry at Graham for what he has done to us. He has poisoned Blake's mind to the point that he cannot tell the truth from a lie. Blake couldn't have truly loved me, because if he did, he would have listened to me. But instead of coming to me for us to work it out, he stayed silent, thinking so badly of me, for goddess knows how long. The fact that he was so okay with thinking badly about me, is what hurts the most. He never truly loved me, and I have to turn away from him and face the other direction now. My quiet sobs show the depth of my pain, as I try to work through my broken heart. I guess this is the goddess paying me back for what I did. We may have physically been able to escape Silver Blade, but we can't escape what the goddess has planned for us. Blake started rubbing my back, trying to comfort me, as I could tell that he was now upset with me crying like this, but I cannot stop the flow of tears. I cannot stop my heart from knowing that he would rather listen to a vicious old man than to his own mate. It hurts, it hurts when you see that other people's opinions matter more than your own. I will never recover from this, and I do not want him touching me any more tonight. I thought I wanted to talk to him, but he has shown me that it will not matter what I say in my defense. He already has his own opinion and nothing anyone else says to him about it will change it. Blake lays down behind me and tried to pull me towards him. My continuing to cry is now bothering him, and I can feel it. I can feel his doubt at what Graham has told him. He starts kissing my shoulder, and my mark and is actively trying to comfort me. But I am stealing my heart against him. I know exactly where I stand now. I bet Graham is thinking that he has won. He has destroyed our relationship and we are at the beginning of the end. He got me, no, he got us both back for what happened to Reagan and her punishment as a breeder. I knew he was mad, but she had called that down on herself, with her own actions. As I continued to cry until my eyes burned and I had no more tears left the shed, I knew what I had to do. Graham has destroyed both my, and my son's life with the lies he told. I cannot let him get away with it, and I won't. I will make do for as long as I can, and when it gets bad enough I will leave here. I will take Kevin, and we will get away from here. I will take any of my children who will want to go with me, but as much as they all dote on their dad, I know in my heart that it will only be me and Kevin when we leave. I will put my plan in motion in the morning. I will be needed money and I will be needed a vehicle. But one day soon, we will be getting out of here. I refuse to stay here and be thought of like this. I will not stay and love someone whose opinion of me is so bad as to refuse to listen to me or allow me to deny such a vicious accusation. I will just play along, mind my business, and not tip my hand. I will prepare to leave and it will have to be a well-thought-out plan because Blake is always worried about my leaving. I will bear this as long as I can, before leaving, but if Blake ever puts his hands on our son Kevin, all bets will be off at that time. I remember how it felt for my dad to value my brother over me. I know exactly what that feels like. I will build Kevin back up as best as I can and support him. I refuse to allow my mate to do that to me, or him. It messes me up inside, and I am still jealous of Leander to this day, even though he did not deserve it. That was all dad, valuing him over me, 
all because I was a girl, and not important. Leander was his son and his heir. Ignoring my ability as a fierce fighter in my own right, showing his love and support to my younger sibling, and always withholding it from me. I just hope that Kevin can hang on for a little while longer as I try to get this nailed down. Because when I can put my plan in motion, the ST is going to really hit the fan. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode, join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.